the title of this paper is Data to Work, a general framework for self-supervised learning in speech, vision, and language. Uh, the reason why I chose this paper is um, it's closely related to the work that we have done in vision. And uh, it has also intersection with other research areas like language and speech. So the key thing is to have a general framework over the recent development in self-supervised learning approach. It has been domain specific or where it refers to as modality specific, where you develop a self-supervised learning approach for speech. We develop another method for vision, another one for language. So this works is to unify that approach so that you have just one framework and you can use the same framework with less tweaking for different modalities. They claim that uh, having to have uh, different predictions, for instance, in the in vision, the task may be to predict the visual tokens, um, um, in language to predict the tokens, in vision to predict the, the pixels. So that uh, affects the, the algorithm, the learning framework. So the learning framework needs to be tweaked and adapted to specific modality. So that's what the general idea is. So have a self-supervised learning that is identical across different modalities. Okay. So to get closer to that, to develop a data to work, the key thing is that it uses the same learning method for any of the modalities. And the core idea is that it's going to predict the latent representation of the full data based on the max view of the input in a self desolation setup using a standard transform architecture. Now, normally we have gone through some papers on self supervised, you know that the kind of tax sometimes could be that you have an augmented view of an image and you're trying to learn a representation or you're trying to predict the uh, output based on the augmentation, like you have two pair, one is the original, the other is rotated or transformed, and you're trying to learn representation based on that. But in this work, they are actually predicting the latent representation, that is the vectors to my understanding of the parameters of the network. So instead of predicting modality specific target words, such as word visual token, what the data to back predict is the contextualized latent representation that contain information on the entire input. All right. So I'll have highlighted some areas I will quickly touch on. So if we look here the method it's similar to um we look in this uh, related work the method is similar to what they did in beyond bootstrap your own latent uh, which is this other paper so it's very similar to this bootstrap your own latent and the difference is that they are not uh what they do in their own is that they use the max prediction tax to regress in multiple neural network layers but the idea is similar to that because they are performing a regression tax on the neural network representation then they demonstrate their own approach work for multiple modalities as compared to this as only for image. 
Okay, that's a key point there. Now in 3.4, they define their objective function. So that, that is in page four. So here they define the objective function. So this is the objective function. And generally what this is saying that they are trying to use the Euclidean distance, which is also referred to as the L2 long or the L1 long based on a threshold of beta. So my findings, the Euclidean distance or the L2 long mimic an averaging of your input. Why the L1 norm mimic the median of your input? Essentially, if you have an L2 norm and you have a feature space, you're going to have your curve to be convex this way. So this mimics what you refer to as the average of the point. On the other hand, if you are using the L1 norm, you're going to have straight line down and you have a sharp peak. So that's the L2, the L1 norm. So what they are not doing here in this loss function is they are trying to combine the two such that you have a network that will not just be as sharp as the L2, but you have something in between that gives uh, a advantage of the two. So that's my understanding of what they are trying to use this uh, multi-objective function based on the threshold to achieve. And this one is just to make sure that it's easily differentiable since you have a square here. Okay. So now, depending on the size of the gap between the target and the model prediction. So first, let's talk about this target. What is this target? Now, if we go to page, same page four, you see here in the target, how the target is defined in the objective function. So they formulate their target as this, that the training target are constructed based on the output of the top K blocks of the teacher network for time steps, which are matched in the student mode. We understand this better if we look at figure one, so in the first figure here, what's happening here is that you have essentially two network, which is similar to what you have here to online and target network, because it's very close. So first, they are not concatenating these modalities. They're just telling us that these modalities can just be switched seamlessly without doing much tweaking. So you send in the original image into the teacher mode and you know that the transformer network has two components. It has the encoder mode and the decoder mode. And this is based on the self-attention. And as a quick recap, the self-attention is based on three criteria, the key and the query, the key, and the value. So what you're happening in the separate attention is similar to information retriever tax, whereby you post a query on the on Google and you expect some similarity measure to take place. And the Google returns a hierarchical set of results, which are the values ranked by the similarity score between your query and your key. So essentially that is the same thing that's happening in the in this transform architecture which they use. And they claim that even though they use the transform architecture, other architecture could easily be substituted for that. So 
you have a query when they are considering image essentially what they use is that they divide this image into a system by system patch so you like break this image down into different patches and you flatten the patch so let's say this is one two three four like that up to the last value here so you flatten that and you send that into your uh, transformer architecture and the transformer architecture also has a component which is called the positional em uh, embeddings that is um, added to this to be able to have a, an embedding vector that is position aware so this formulates the query and this is repeated as also for the key and the value and here we send each of these into a fully connected layer as well as this into a fully connected layer and they use cosine similarities to be able to align the weight of this network such that when you have a matrix the diagonal we have the is correlation so that if you break the images or the text into different rows so what you have here we correlate uh, eye coloration with what you have here because this is the same thing as this so that's the self-attention mechanism that's just a brief recap of that so that's the architecture they use but they didn't wear more on transformer they just use as a recap for better understanding so now after learning the model on the teacher mode to be able to have a representation of the original unmarked inputs and the input could be any of these modalities and the next thing is now to send the max representation into the network such that the student network in the student mode is having inputs that are maxed and is expected to be able to uh, output some layers uh, i believe the vectors or matrices in some layers in the teacher mode so the objective function is defined as the l2 long because of course since some areas are maxed it's not possible for the student to actually get the exact thing so to be able to learn the student you have to have a kind of a help to objective function to measure how bad the prediction is as compared to the teacher mode okay so that's what's happening in not share there so going back to our target uh, which i was explaining before in page four so here they formulate the target based on the output of the top k blocks of the teacher network for timestamps which are maxed in the student mode. So the output of the block at times is denoted as this. And we apply a normalization to each block to obtain this before averaging the top K block. So the white hat is defined as this, the summation of that normalized uh, uh, output of the block for the network. So the, the target, the work of the student network is to obtain this training target for the time steps that are maxed. So that's what is defined in this objective function as the YT. Why the FT is the network that is receiving the input, the prediction of the network, and you want it to be as close as possible. Okay, simple idea. I'm not too clear as to their explanation on the exponential moving average. When I tried to further find out, I discovered that they are borrowing the idea from this uh, bootstrap, your own legend, and I think it was better explained here. So, um, uh, this is an essential piece of this exponential moving average. So, going back to my own area of focus, which is the vision. So what they did is they embed images of two by 
22 to 4 by 2 divided into eight parties. Like I said before, they divided that into system by system. And uh, what they did, each part is nearly transformed, so they flattened it. And the sequence of Y96 is input into the standard transformer. So they didn't do much tweaking to the transformer architecture. So they just follow the same maxing strategy as using this. Uh, because we are going to max out some part based on what we have seen here. It's the max impact. Okay. So then the rest just follow what they has implemented in this particular work. So they did some random flipping, they resized, color jittering, and all of that. And these are some hyperparameters on the training of the network. Okay. So uh, now there's this work on the self-supervising related work in page two that I want to pay attention to. That the self-supervised learning in computer vision. So the unsupervised training for computer has been an active way of research. And the formulation of the task is often based on the contrastive representations of augmentation of the same image. This is very similar to the work that we just published. But rather than we using augmentations, we actually use different uh, species class to learn our contrastive representation. But most work use the augmentation of the same image. Entirely different uh, image. So some they use uh, different images, entirely different images to be able to learn the contrastive form. So I've mentioned this, the work is to learn the regression uh, tax. And I think that's about all about the architecture. The every other thing is standard based on transform architectures on previous papers that they are just borrowing. The only thing I do not fully understand is this teacher parameterization, which is based on exponential moving average. If anybody has uh, insight into that, please contribute. So they trained on standard benchmarks and they reported the result on the speech processing, natural language processing, and, uh, and also on computer vision tax. So I think what make more representation to me is the computer vision tax. There are some tweaking on representation collapse, just like we have most collapse in, in GAN, such that the network will be able to uh, predict different representations of the target. Okay, so yeah, I think that's about all. Uh, this is a representation of what is said in the abstract. Just a single method to learn multiple modalities without having to do much tweaking. All right. Is there any contribution? That's all the that